So lorazidone is a um, second generation atypical antipsychotic. It's one of the newest ones brought out. I don't know what people already know about receptors in other antipsychotics, but lorazidone has quite high affinity for D2, high affinity for 5-HT2A and 5-HT7, um, and then medium affinity for 5-HT1A, but almost no affinity for D4. Apart from a few of us who are psychiatrists. The rest are non psychiatrists. Non psychiatrists, okay, so it doesn't mean it's great deal. Okay, so, sorry. Okay. so it's, um, it's a bit different in its structure, basically, to some of the other antidepressants, and some of the receptors which it has are more um, similar to some of the antidepressant medications. So it's an antipsychotic, but been found to be helpful for um, some depressive symptoms as well as just psychosis sorts of things. Okay. Um, so this is really a sort of summary of the information that I've presented in my paper. Um, so there's a pharmacokinetic pharmaco study which is looking at how medications work in the body, how quickly they're absorbed, um, and this looked at 105 children. That there had already been evidence in adults with more papers and things being done. So the children's study was really looking at whether or not it was similar to what was already found in adults, because some medications um, affect children slightly differently to what they do for adult patients. Um, so it's quite a wide range of patients, 6 to 17 years, with quite a variety of disorders ranging from ADHD, autism, bipolar disorder, depression, schizophrenia, um, and quite a wide dose range between 20 and 160 milligrams. Um, the current recommended maximum is 148 milligrams in the um, English BNF, but that's been used at 160 in um, America and other places. Found a linear dose effect, so that essentially means that as the medication goes up in the dose, then the amount that's found in the body is um, proportional to that. Um, the median Tmax is, is the time that it takes to reach its maximum state, and that generally takes about two hours. Um, and the profile that was seen comparing it to the previous adult studies that have been conducted was almost the same. The only slight difference was they broke it down into some age brackets, and in the six to nine year old um, age group, there did seem to be a slightly higher um, drug level compared to the linear effect that might be expected. So, moving on to thinking about its use in um, particular disorders in children and young people. Um, so, this was following the results of a systematic review, which is where you take um, searches of most of the sort of major search um, engines um, to be able to look for all the evidence that's been published. So that included um, randomised controlled trials, case studies, um, unpublished and um, published studies. And essentially there wasn't really a huge amount um, on children. It was about, out of about 300 hits that came up, there was about 12 relevant studies that were actually on children and adolescents with lorazidone use. So there was Quite a big study conducted in 2017 um, on bipolar depression that included 347 children and adolescents. Uh, when it was in this randomised control trial stage, it was a fairly short trial, which is often the case with randomised control trials, so six weeks. Um, but after six weeks, it showed significant improvement compared to placebo on most of the measures. Um, and of particular note, which is something which the resident seems to be beneficial compared to other and psychotics is that the cognitive and functional symptoms were um, improved with no negative effect on um, cognition. The effect size was 0.45. This is a statistical measure of kind of how much um, effect there is, um, which is a sort of moderate effect. It's not a high um, level, but it's not low. And then they looked at responders, which is um, on most of the scale, the sort of halving of the um, number of symptoms. And this showed that 59.5 compared to 36% um, responded compared to placebo, and the NO2 is the number needed to treat. So that means that five patients would be needed to treat to have a definite benefit from the lorazidone. But unfortunately, despite the responders being quite significant, there wasn't a statistical difference in the remission rate, the remission being where there's a complete resolution of, of symptoms. What was found in the study is that the higher the dose of medication used, then the more likely it was to improve the Madras score, which is a depression rating scale. Um, and this was a similar finding to what's been found in adult patients, but it only used doses up to a maximum of 80 milligrams. Um, 
and so we don't know if it may have had a higher response if they'd have gone up to higher levels, which is what has happened in adults, which has shown a better response. Um, but they decided, I think, not to use higher doses because of the fact that there was evidence that above 100 or 110 milligrams as more side effects can be apparent. So as well as the initial six-week study, they also conducted um, an open-label follow-up study. So this was the same young people that were involved in the original study, um, but after the first six weeks, they were aware that they were no longer on, on the placebo. So the ones who were on placebo were changed to the active medication, as well as those who were already on it, staying on it. And then they were looked at at 28 weeks. And there is a plan for it to follow up right up to two years, but when I did a recent search, there wasn't any more recent data on that. So this was just 155 participants who continued, um, and at six months there was continued improvement in depressive symptoms that were seen, and also no deterioration um, in cognition compared to the results from, from the placebo at the end of the six-week um, study. So there wasn't a kind of continued improvement in cognition, but there wasn't any negative effect from it. The main side effects which were noted from this study was headache, nausea and anxiety, which is fairly similar to um, the other studies and adult studies. It didn't mention um, so much about the somnolence, which is feeling sleepy, which is a side effect which is noted in some of the other ones. And the other important thing with Lorazepam compared to other medications is that nearly all of the other antipsychotic medications have a significant impact on weight um, as well as on uh, diabetes with lipids and increased sugar profiles. In lorazodone, as in the adult studies, there's almost no effect noted on um, metabolic parameters or on weight, um, and no effect on prolactin levels compared to placebo. So moving on to think about schizophrenia. So there was a randomized controlled trial in 2016 with 237 adolescents. This was reported in two or three different places by two or three different people, but it was the same study. Um, again, they chose to use doses of 40 <coughs> milligrams and 80 milligrams, which was the same as the bipolar depression study, and didn't go up any higher than that. Um, and they found significant improvement in the PANDAS scale, which is a positive and negative um, symptom scale. So it's a measure of severity of both the frank kind of psychotic symptoms in terms of voices, hallucinations, delusions, and those sorts of things and the negative symptoms would be more things like the um, emotional affect being reduced and, and being slower in there and being more apathetic and those sorts of negative symptoms. So there was more effect noted on the positive subscale with an effect size around 0.5, which is slightly higher than the bipolar study. Um, similarly to the bipolar study, again found um, around 60 to 65% responded on the 40 milligrams and the 80 milligram doses versus 42% with the placebo. It is interesting in these studies that even in schizophrenia it's still saying there's a 42% response rate in placebo, which I think is a bit higher than some of the adult studies, so it would maybe lead you to question a little bit whether definite schizophrenia in the, mm -hmm. in the adolescent patients. Were they using any kind of questionnaire to um, validate the diagnosis or or was it just clinical assessments? Um, I, I think it was mainly clinical assessment, but it certainly stated that they did fulfil criteria for the schizophrenia and criteria under ICD-10, I think it was. Mm -hmm. It might have been DSM-5, but it was one of them. I think when we come to discussions, we can discuss about um, how many of them we do actually diagnose as schizophrenia in children yeah, and then we don't diagnose yeah. that often. Yeah, yeah, there is a is quite a lot of and it's a to find. presentation rather than a more um, often, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. So again, similar to the um, bipolar study, although there was a significant difference in responders, there wasn't a statistical significant difference in remission rates. Um, and the side effects in this study was nausea and some of the um, being most common, um, which is similar to the adult studies. <coughs> So moving on to autistic spectrum disorder. Well, just sorry, yeah, mm. I'm going to ask a question. I was just looking at side effect between the two mm. studies. Um, would that be pair patient characteristics and that's and mm. like two mm. bipolar and the bipolar? Mm. And some of them seem more in the schizophrenia. That's, that's mm. the study possible, yeah. 
I mean, I think in, on, on the multi disorder studies as well, it also mentioned somnolence as well. Um, I mean, I think it was mentioned as a side effect, but it wasn't one of the most prominent ones. I think. And that was in comparison to placebo, you see. Mm. I suspect there's been no head to head trials. There hasn't been any, any head to head trials in children, there has in adults. But <coughs> That's okay. So the head-to-head -head ones in adults and um, has found that it's as effective as quetiapine or slightly more effective than quetiapine, but not quite as effective as risperidone or lanzapine. Um, so for ASD, there was one randomized controlled trial in 150 children um, with autistic spectrum disorder and irritability or and, um, agitation and or self-injurious behaviors. Um, and in this study, loazidone wasn't superior to placebo on the primary outcome or most secondary outcomes. Having said that, there was significant difference seen on the low dose of 20 milligrams on the CGI scale, which is the um, uh, Coalition Global Improvement Scale. Um, so I think that's a, it's a reasonably subjective measure. I had it on my notes, but it's not coming up on, on the screen and outside, but it's, um, it's a fairly subjective scale, but it would have been a ra randomised, um, they would have been blind to know who was on and who wasn't. The discontinuation rate, interestingly, was lower on Lurazidone than it was on placebo. Um, it might go into something to do with the clinical impression of getting some benefit from it. Um, apart from that study, there's also one case report which showed benefit when Lurazidone and Aripiprasol had failed in a young person with um, autism who'd had aggressive behaviour and agitation and they haven't responded as well as having more side effects with the Arabic So there's, as well as the original pharmacokinetic study, um, which you'll say was conducted across multiple disorders, there was also a efficacy study across multiple disorders, which was a smaller study with 56 patients, and it was a retrospective review, so this wasn't a randomized control trial. 18% um, discontinued, but for those that didn't discontinue, for um, 45 out of the 56 patients, it was found to be effective um, with improvement seen on average on day four. It didn't quantify the results so much in terms of their scales in this study. But 75% reported experiencing no side effects at all. And the dis disorders in this study was quite a variety, quite a lot of mood stabilization, some for depression, some for bipolar disorder as well as um, psychotic symptoms. So moving on to the, the reason why I sort of started looking at Lurazidone and do, doing the report was following an involvement with a case um, of a 14-year-old girl who was um, seen when I was working at Lee House Hospital, which is our local adolescent um, hospital. Um, and she pre presented what, what appeared to be frank psychotic um, from the case's presentation, having initially presented the year before with um, anorexia. Um, and she met a full criteria for anorexia and at that time described quite a prominent anorexic voice um, which is not uncommon in young people with anorexia um, and in view of the intensity of her symptoms and the agitation from the voice she was started on some melanzapine at that time which she was still taking a discharge at a dose of um, I think 5 milligrams which was decreased to 2.5 um, Two months after discharge she then started to experience low mood and she started on fluoxetine and stipressin Milligrams and initially experienced some benefit, um, but two months later she then had very prominent auditory, visual, and olfactory hallucinations. So she was reporting seeing terrorists um, dropping bombs from planes, feeling the heat of the fire, and um, being very fearful to go out, seeing people hiding behind bushes. Um, and she sort of consistently appeared to be terrified by, by staff and family. She had been very high functioning. She'd been involved in high level um, sporting activities and um, competing at a national level, um, as well as having good friendships, but became fearful to leave the house and was withdrawn from the friendships. Uh, so the alanzapine was increased, um, but with noticeable sedation and no real improvement in symptoms. And in view of her risk of how she was presented, she ended up being admitted to one of the private camps in patient units as, as a uh, still as an NHS patient. But um, to a different unit before coming to Lee House. At that time, the lanzapine was increased right up to 20 milligrams, which is the highest dose that's usually used in young people. Um, 
but severe sedation made it really difficult for her to function. And she was just very sleepy most of the time. So she was then changed to risperidone, which is another antipsychotic, and um, dose up to three milligrams. And around that point, she was then transferred to Lee House um, as a moving closer to home. At that point, she met criteria for early onset psychosis or schizophrenia criteria, um, but she was experiencing side effects from the risperidone with um, extra parental side effects. So she was reporting um, feeling very stiff in her shoulders and her back, um, as well as having quite frequent severe nosebleeds, which is another one that's mentioned on possible side effects with risperidone. And prolaptin level was raised, which is again known to happen with risperidone. And one known treatment for that is to be to start aripiprazole antipsychotic, um, which as well as being an antipsychotic in its own right has the effect of reducing prolactin. Um, so that was added in. But in view of losing the improvement seen on the risperidone, she was then transitioned over to aripiprazole as the sole antipsychotic, and she increased up to 25 milligrams a day, which is quite a high level that quite often young people don't get above about 15 or so. Um, and she seemed to tolerate that reasonably well with improvements noticed with each increment when it was increased. Um, she started to function better and she managed some home leave, um, but continued to report, report the voices as well as the auditory, um, as well as the visual hallucinations being present, being very fearful to go outside. Um, the house, the residential building where the bedrooms are is in one building and the school is in another building, and she was very fearful to walk between um, the two buildings still reporting seeing terrorists and people waiting behind bushes. Um, she deteriorated significantly during her GCSE exams. She was a very bright girl and functioned very well academically, but the stress of the um, exams seemed to make her deteriorate significantly. So she was taken out of the um, exams at that point. Um, and she was saying that the voices were much stronger and were telling her that the medication, as well as a bit later on, food and fluid was poisoned. Um, so because of that, when she was already on the maximum dose of aripiprazole, we considered at that point what antipsychotic to consider next. And one factor which she was not keen on by this point was um, weight gain um, in view of her previous anorexia. Um, she had gained some weight, she wasn't yet overweight, but she was approaching the 75th BMI centile, which is the sort of upper end of the healthy range. Um, so one antipsychotic that was um, considered was quetiapine, um, which is another, it's probably the fourth most common antipsychotic used. Um, and the reason that we were considering that in terms of guidance for psychosis treatment, if you failed on two antipsychotics, the recommendation is often to consider clozapine, um, but particularly with her being very against um, weight gain, um, as well as um, the fact that although she had been on the different antipsychotics, she largely hadn't tolerated them apart from the aripiprazole at the sort of um, treatment dose for a significant period of time. Um, so Quetiapine was decided not to go with partly because of the effect of sedation that she'd already experienced with the olanzapine as well as the concerns about weight gain. So at that point we looked at the literature and this was before um, these two big studies had been brought out on its use in adolescence in schizophrenia and bipolar disorder. But um, it was clear from the adult literature that um, there was the least expectation of gaining weight, and the studies indicating that it was at least as, as effective as quetiapine, as well as having pro-cognitive effects. And so, in view of it not being used very much in young people, um, with much without much trial evidence, we started it very cautiously at half the recommended BNF starting dose, and um, started it alongside prosaclidin, because it does indicate that extra parental side effects can be a similar rate to risperidone, and she'd already experienced some extra parental side effects with that. To trade it up every three to four days and got up to a dose of 74 milligrams, which is a sort of medium level, um, but it's a, around the dose which has been used in the studies, while at the same time reducing the aripiprazole. Unfortunately, around this time, there was actually a significant deterioration as, as the abrix was coming down and the other one was going up, with voices telling her that medications as well as food and fluid were poisoned. Um, so she was refusing to have medications and she did miss several doses. So at that point we were considering intramuscular medication, and lorazodone isn't one that can be used uh, intramuscularly. Um, also considering giving medication via an NG tube. Um, when it was discussed with her and thinking about using the Mental Health Act, she actually was consenting for an NG tube to be used, although she was finding it difficult 
with support, she was able to accept food as well as medication by an MG tube. And interestingly, from a practical point of view, the lazadem dissolves almost completely when it's um, put into a um, liquid formula, which it doesn't mention on the body characteristics, but it was very convenient to use um, by NG. Um, so the dose of the lazadem continued to be increased every one to two weeks, going up to the BNF maximum dose of 148 milligrams. And during this time, she improved significantly in her interaction with peers as well as parents and went on some leave. Um, and after a week of being on the 148 milligrams, um, had a significant improvement in her mental state with the voices significantly reduced. Um, she was discharged around four weeks after being on the 148 milligrams of the day, and at that point, parents were reporting that she was um, at her best mental state that she'd ever been in the in the past two years. The only side effect that was really noted at that point was causing her some sedation, but less so than it had been on the Lanzapine or the Beridone, and she was still managing to do her usual activities. So in terms of her weight gain, um, she gained 0.5 kilograms compared to when she started on the Lanzapine, <coughs> although she was still within the healthy range, but that compared to gaining 2 kilograms um, when she was on the Aripiprazole for the two-month period. I think it's also worth bearing in mind that a lot of young people in the house tend to gain weight whether or not they're on medication. I think part of the, the amount of kind of food and regularity that's available as well as probably more limited activity than they would usually have in a, in a community setting. So as I mentioned, so the evidence from the adult, adult literature shows that the residue has a similar efficacy to asperidone and superior to protiopine with improved uh, cognitive effects. Um, as well as bipolar depression and schizophrenia, it's also found to be effective for depression and schizophrenia in adults. Um, and the Delbello in the Golden Studies that I mentioned for schizophrenia and bipolar dis depression um, indicate that it's effective in adolescents with a dose related response. But it is a shame that neither study went above 80 milligrams. I guess what the case report kind of indicates, um, as well as clinical experience, is that although adolescents tend to be more sensitive to side effects, it's quite common if they have a, a frank psychosis to need to go up to maximum doses in order to get a, a full treatment response. So lorazidone appears to be a good choice for the treatment of psychosis in young people. Um, the other thing that's been done in adults but not done in children and adolescents is a cost-benefit analysis um, and it showed that the, although it is slightly more expensive than some of the other antipsychotic medications, in view of the reduced hospitalizations and um, reduced weight gain with then reduced incidence of diabetes, the health saving was quite significant when they did the um, analysis. And in theory, if we are talking about young people who aren't presenting with a transient psychosis, but if it is the start of a, a true schizophrenia picture, then it could represent a significant cost as well as health benefit. So, Similar pharmacokinetics to adults, increasing evidence for benefit by bipolar depression and schizophrenia, and some evidence for use in other disorders, possibly a second or third line, including bipolar disorder, mood stabilization, and autistic spectrum disorders. So certainly autistic spectrum is a lot less evidence than it is, and you wouldn't be wanting to use it as first line, but there is some evidence, certainly from the clinical grade depression scale, that there's potential and benefit if other antipsychotic medications are failed. But ultimately, we don't really know for sure um, whether or not um, higher doses of medication may lead to more remission, which would be following the adult results. Um, so that would be a direction, hopefully, that someone will take for.